lifting, moving, and placing large, awkward, and heavy loads is a necessary part of many industrial, construction, and manufacturing operations. The cranes and lifting devices that perform these critical operations come in many sizes, shapes, and configurations. Bridge cranes, mobile cranes, and jib cranes are some common types of cranes found in industrial and construction operations. And just as these rugged and powerful machines are critical to our operations, a crane operator committed to moving the load in a safe, controlled manner is essential to avoiding injury and property damage. In the blink of an eye, an improperly rigged or hoisted load can have monumental and often deadly consequences. In this program, you will learn the safe work practices and precautions necessary to keep you and your co-workers out of harm's way while you're operating or rigging cranes and hoists. Before operating any crane, you must be trained and authorized by your employer. Do not attempt to operate any crane unless you are trained and authorized to do so. Keep in mind that viewing this program is only part of your training and does not make you qualified to operate any crane or hoist. Qualified operators must be trained on a variety of topics related to the specific crane to be operated, including how to determine the crane's lifting capacity, the capacity of all rigging components, determining the weight of the load and its load center, understanding how various rigging configurations affect the capacity of a sling, understanding the proper operation of the crane's controls, and knowing how to perform a pre-operational inspection of the crane and rigging equipment. In this program, we will discuss these and other aspects of safe crane operations, starting with the pre-operational inspection. All cranes must receive a detailed annual or periodic inspection from a qualified person or organization. This inspection examines the many parts of the crane that are off limits and out of view of most operators. This annual inspection must be documented, signed, and dated. In addition, frequent inspections of the crane must be done by a qualified person designated by the employer. This frequent inspection, which should be done monthly, should inspect the crane hook, the hoist rope, all limit switches, safety stops, and verify the proper operation of the crane's controls. This monthly inspection should also be documented, signed, and dated. In addition, the operator should perform a pre-operational inspection before use. The operator should test each crane control to make sure it works properly and causes the crane to react as expected. This includes all directional controls, such as up and down, as well as side-to-side -side movement. Also, limit switches and emergency stop control should be tested. For example, the upper limit switch should prevent the hook from being raised too high. Test this without a load. When using a mobile crane, check fluid levels and tire pressures as well as the proper operation of all driving controls in addition to the crane controls. Inspect the wire rope of the hoist to ensure it is free from defects. Watch the rope as the hook is raised and lowered, looking for breaks, kinks, or other damage. All rigging components should also be inspected for good condition. It's important to know what to look for when inspecting the various rigging components. Let's start with the hook. This is a typical crane hook. It should have a properly operating safety latch and the hook should not be stretched or bent. If you discover a hook to be stretched more than 15% of its original size or has been twisted more than 10 degrees, you must replace it. If using chains, make sure they are in good condition and don't show signs of wear or overloading. A chain that has been overloaded will have links that look like this, tapering in towards the middle rather than maintaining a consistent oval shape. Also, look out for excessive wear where links join each other or where the chain joins a hook. Be aware that chains should never be welded, either to other chains, spreader bars, or hooks. Chains are made of alloy steel, and the heat from welding can make them very brittle. If you discover a welded chain, remove it from service immediately. 
Chains used as lifting devices must carry a capacity label. Checking for this label or tag is part of the pre-operation inspection. Chains frequently utilize various types of connecting devices and shackles. Inspect these devices, especially the pins and cotter keys for damage or excessive wear. Make sure they are oriented as designed to withstand the load. For example, a shackle is only designed to withstand a vertical load like this and should never be side-loaded or connected like this. Wire rope is another common lifting device which must be inspected before use. Wire rope is made up of small wires twisted together to form strands. Several strands are then twisted around a core material to form a wire rope. When a particular strand makes a complete turn about the core, it is referred to as one lay. The capacity of a wire rope depends on several factors, including the size and number of wires per strand, the number of strands, and the type of core material. Wire rope is not required to have a capacity label affixed to it. Its capacity can be determined by looking it up in a chart or rigging book provided by the wire rope manufacturer or supplier. Make sure you fully understand how to determine the capacity of any wire rope you work with before using it to lift a load. Ask your supervisor if you have any questions. Wire rope must be inspected for an excessive number of broken wires, which will reduce its capacity. When wire rope is used as a sling, it must be removed from service if any particular strand contains five or more broken wires within one lay, or if there are ten or more randomly distributed broken wires within one lay. When wire rope becomes kinked, the core and strands may be damaged, reducing its capacity. When a wire rope has been overloaded, shock loaded, or side loaded, the strands can separate or even push apart, forming a birdcage. Excessive numbers of broken wires, kinks, separated strands, and bird cages all require a wire rope be removed from service. Always wear heavy leather gloves when handling wire rope. Broken wires can easily cut or puncture unprotected hands. Perhaps the most common lifting device are the various types of nylon and web slings. These types of slings are strong and lightweight but are susceptible to damage. When inspecting this type of sling, look for cuts in the sling frayed webbing, or excessive wear or broken stitches. Nylon slings have a capacity tag attached. If the capacity tag is missing, the sling must be removed from service. If the pre-operational inspection turns up any problems with the crane operation or rigging, do not use the crane and or rigging. Remove it from service until the problem is corrected by a qualified person. After completing the pre-operational inspection, it's time to rig the load. Before working with any crane or rigging any load, make sure you use the necessary protective equipment required by your employer. Safety glasses, steel-toed boots, and a hard hat are usually required. Leather gloves may be necessary when handling wire rope or material with sharp edges. Because loads come in many shapes and sizes, the various devices designed to lift them also come in many shapes and sizes. Some lifting devices are fixed in size and shape, while others may be adjustable. Some devices rely on pressure to clamp the load to the lifting device, while others rely on chains, hooks, slings, or wire rope to do the job. In all cases, no matter what type of lifting device is used, there are two important points to keep in mind. First, the weight of any device attached to the crane hook must be considered part of the load. This is critical when determining if a load exceeds a crane's capacity. Second, all components of the lifting device and rigging must be properly rated and certified load tested to handle the load. This is why you should never use homemade lifting devices or attempt to repair any lifting device unless you are trained and authorized to do so. For example, Never replace a missing shackle pin with a standard bolt or add a replacement link to a chain. These types of unapproved modifications can lead to disaster. The various types of fixed lifting devices will have a capacity tag or label displaying its load-tested capacity. 
If no capacity can be found, do not use the device. We have previously mentioned that chains and nylon slings will have a capacity tag attached, while a wire rope's capacity can be determined based on its size. However, chains, slings, and wire ropes can be connected to a load in various configurations that greatly affect their lifting capacity. This is why only trained and authorized employees are allowed to rig a load to a crane. For example, the tag on most slings will list three different capacities for the three most common ways the sling is attached to the load. These different connections are commonly called hitches. A vertical hitch is formed by simply attaching the rope, sling, or chain directly from the hook to the load. A basket hitch is formed when a sling is passed under a load with both ends placed in the crane hook. Typically, two slings are used and adjusted to balance the load. Finally, a choker hitch is formed by passing one end of the sling through another, then attaching that end to the crane hook. Be aware that using a choker hitch on a small diameter load while using a wire rope can kink and damage the rope. It's important to check the capacity of any sling you use and understand how that capacity changes based on the type of hitch you plan to use. In addition to the type of hitch, the number of slings used and the sling angle has a tremendous effect on the amount of force placed on the sling and must be considered when selecting the proper sling for the job. For our discussion, the sling angle is defined as the angle formed between the crane hook and the sling. Let's look at some examples. This single sling vertical hitch is holding a 1,000 pound load. There is no sling angle. The amount of force placed on this sling is 1,000 pounds. When two slings are used and attached on the outside edge of the load, like this, a sling angle is created. In this example, we have created a sling angle of 30 degrees. For the same 1,000 pound load, the force placed on each leg is 578 pounds. If the angle is further increased to 45 degrees, the force placed on each leg increases to 707 pounds. And when the angle reaches 60 degrees, the force placed on each leg increases to 1,000 pounds. This is equal to the full weight of the load. If this angle increases beyond 60 degrees, the force on each leg exceeds the full weight of the load. These types of sling angles can easily overload a sling. A good rule of thumb to avoid overloading a sling is to use a sling rated for the full weight of the load and avoid sling angles greater than 45 degrees. Another common application is to use a spreader bar. Using a spreader bar can eliminate sling angles. It allows the use of shorter slings and can reduce the force placed on the slings. For the same 1,000 pound load using a spreader bar, the load is divided equally between the slings. The force on each sling now is 500 pounds. We have discussed just a few basic rigging concepts, but a good rigging handbook contains many more configurations and calculations for more complex and multi-legged rigs. Proper rigging is critical for a safe lift, so only allow fully qualified persons to rig a load. Now that we have properly inspected the crane and rigging, and selected a sling or lifting device with enough capacity to lift the load in the manner we plan to rig it, it's time to make the lift. Before using a crane, look around for hazards and always make sure to look up as well. Look for any overhead hazards or other cranes that may be in your path of travel or in your swing radius. Keep a sharp lookout for power lines and other electrical hazards. Never use any crane within 10 feet of electrical power lines or live electrical parts. Make sure there are no coworkers or pedestrians in the immediate area before you begin the lift. Workers in the surrounding area should be informed that a crane is being placed in operation. Mobile crane operators must ensure that no one is within the swing radius of the crane. Barricades and or spotters may be used for this function. No matter what type of hitch you are using, place your hitch near the center of the load so it will be balanced when lifted by the crane. 
When connecting the load to the hook, always place the sling or connecting device into the deepest part or throat of the hook. This is the strongest part of the hook and the only part designed to hold loads at its rated capacity. Lip hooking or connecting the load too close to the lip of the hook can bend and damage the hook. Be aware that odd-shaped loads may have a load center that is not in the visual center of the load. Test your rig by slowly lifting the load a few inches off the ground to ensure it stays in balance and doesn't begin to swing. If the load is not balanced, lower it back to the ground and adjust the position of the rig and try again. If this is the first lift of the day, take a moment to test the crane's brakes by lifting the load a few inches and letting it hang about 30 seconds. If the brakes are functioning properly, the load should not slip. It's also a good idea to test the brakes when changing from a lighter load to a heavier load. Remember that cranes are only designed to hoist loads straight up. Make sure the crane is directly over the load before you lift. When a crane is not placed directly over a load to be lifted, this is called side loading. Side loading can damage parts of the crane and the rigging, as well as cause the load to swing out of control. Lift the load slowly and avoid sudden jerks and quick stops. Lifting and stopping loads too quickly, also known as jerking a load, can damage the crane and the lifting devices. This is especially damaging to wire rope leading to strand separation and bird caging. When moving the load, carry it just high enough to clear obstacles in your path. Also, move the crane at very slow speeds so you can pay attention to the load and its path of travel at the same time. Always keep the load stability as top priority when you are moving the load. Often, ropes or lines called tag lines are connected to a load to help control its orientation while being moved. With the crane holding the weight of the load, it doesn't take much tension on the tag line to prevent swinging or to turn the load into proper position for landing. Operators and riggers must understand that there is never any reason to ride a load. This dangerous practice is strictly prohibited. No matter how much control you think you have, never pass the load over coworkers or pedestrians and never allow them to pass under the load. Always be aware a moving load can easily crush you or a coworker against a solid object. Operators with handheld remote controls are especially vulnerable and must keep a safe distance, especially when lifting and landing loads. Riggers and operators should be aware of pinch points created by slings and attachments as the load is raised and be aware of the location of feet and hands when landing a load. In tight spots or when operating a crane with limited visibility, have a properly trained coworker assist you in lifting or placing a load. This coworker must be trained to use the proper signals to direct the crane operator. A placard of these signals must be posted on the job site and the operator and signal person must have a clear understanding of the signals to be used and their meaning. To avoid confusion, there should only be one signaler during any lifting operation. However, the crane operator should always obey a stop signal no matter who gives it. When you get the load to its destination, land it as soon as possible. Never leave a suspended load unattended. After landing and securing the load, remove the slings and lifting devices. Return the crane, slings, and lifting devices to their respective storage areas. Crane attachments are notorious tripping hazards and can quickly become a housekeeping nightmare if not stored properly. In addition, web slings may become damaged if left on the floor. When finished with the crane, make sure the hoist block is returned to a high enough position so pedestrians and work vehicles can pass underneath safely. As we have seen in this program, cranes are powerful tools, critically important to moving materials around the workplace. In order to harness their power in a safe manner, we as crane operators must be committed to safe, proper operation. Inspect the crane and lifting equipment before use. Make sure you know the capacity of the crane and the capacity of any lifting devices or sling you use. 
be sure you understand how the various hitches and rigging configurations affect the capacity of the slings. And to always be aware that you, the operator, are the most important part of any crane operation. Being a crane operator carries a heavy responsibility. In this program, we have provided an overview of safe work practices and techniques. Your employer and your co-workers are depending on you to combine this information, the additional training you receive, and your good safety attitude to make every lift a safe lift. Thank you.